so I started Chen when I was um, 23. So just a year after I graduated from university, I helped someone very close to me um, escape abuse. And um, together with her, um, we tried to build a case for her, um, proving that she had been through domestic abuse. And it was really difficult. And in that process, you know, her and I must have looked through, you know, hundreds of websites um, and tried to figure out if there were any resources for women both in the UK and Pakistan, where she and I are from. And we just couldn't find information. When we found it, it was either really um, fact based, so it was very supportive, or it was just really old links and the, you had no there was no information to say whether this was updated, whether it was true, when you called up charities, um, even in the UK, um, they'd put you on a hold and you wouldn't be able to get through to someone. And it just was, the whole experience was so bad. Most charity websites had no supportive information at all. So the only option you had was you pick up a phone and you call them or you walk into their office. Both of these options um, are, were not ideal for her. Mm -hmm. So just from inspired by this experience, I felt like I had to do something. So I, that idea was in my head. And then a year after this all happened, and actually she was all settled and everything was fine with her case, um, I after a hackathon, I, I used to attend lots of hackathons. So after going to a hackathon where I was able to contribute a lot to a charity project, I kind of thought, well, I had so much dif difficulty as a digital native, as somebody who actually works in tech, I had so much problem finding this information. I wonder what it's like for women who are just turning to Google and saying, how can I deal with abuse? You know, what are the charities that are working in Pakistan? Or uh, where's the counseling service in the UK? All of these things. Mm -hmm. So that was the starting point for Jen. So I thought, well, I've got all this research and this experience that I had in going through that. So let me just put it all online and then help anybody else who's going through it. So you can find it at um, C-H-A-Y-N dot C-O. So Chen is a word in Urdu, which means peace of mind or solace. And they are, you know, we have been going for three years. We've got about 15 projects that's reaching hundreds of thousands of women across a dozen countries. So they're, but everything uh, about us you can find on uh, Chen dot co. I think there's, um, we've always had this idea because it came from a personal experience that um, A, often the best um, solutions are the simplest solutions. Secondly is um, to go, is to use mainstream tools, mm -hmm. however flawed they are. Things like Facebook, for example, everybody knows there are huge privacy concerns with Facebook and their real name policy and their other um, problems. But the fact that everybody's on it makes it a really effective tool. Yeah. Um, for it to use and thirdly about using people who are going through the experience using them as the experts and uh -huh. getting them to design solutions for their own community I think that's really really important um, we follow the sort of principle that's quite um, popular in civic tech called design with not for so you know we work with survivors um, off of our volunteers, I think 60 to 70 percent of women uh, in our volunteer base are survivors of abuse from around 10 countries. Mm -hmm. So we have them help do everything from research, drafting the resources, doing like research and asking people around them, you know, whether something works or not. Rather than getting experts to do it, we do it the other way around. So it's really going to the people who have the problem, who've been through the pain points and saying, what would be helpful to you? And now that you've told us what's helpful, would you like to make it? <laughs> is it is it something that you use when when people are asking you, you know, would you organize a hackathon for you? What would you advise them to think about? I think that hackathons are a really good opportunity to get a lot of brain power in one room, but it's really important to uh, curate what it's for because it's really easy to lose all that effort and then nothing happens. So sustainability of ideas and and user research are really critical. So rather than just finding um, relevant articles and then thinking okay well this is what I think the user needs um, actually getting them to be part of the teams making them part of the hackathon is really important and also making sure that we challenge our assumptions because as humans we have so many assumptions and biases and it's really important to challenge them so I mean a really common example I have is and I'm sure you've all have heard of this is um, you'll start talking about domestic abuse and then somebody says 
well, isn't that a problem mostly for the poor people? Um, and then, you know, it it doesn't matter what part of the world you're talking to. I've heard this thing come to, said to me by, you know, affluent people in, 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 in India, Pakistan, UK, Lebanon, um, Egypt, like everywhere, US, like I've heard this everywhere. And the answer to that question is no, because, you know, patriarchy is so deeply embedded in our society that it doesn't matter uh, where you are. Domestic abuse affects everybody the same way. Mm -hmm. The only difference is what resources people in particular classes have um, access to. So that is different. But that's a really good example of like an assumption that people have. Mm -hmm. Um, Another assumption is that all women... um, there's no point in using technology because it's like much more um it's easy spied on which is actually true you it is easier to spy on someone online especially if you're skilled um but that's a really bad assumption because that's assuming that women don't go online it may be unsafe uh or there might be risks attached to it but it doesn't stop women from going online they're still going online they're still using whatsapp to chat to their friends and family they're still using facebook to see you know what funny videos are up they're still going to youtube to have a good time they're doing all the things despite the risks mm-hmm. so it's important to challenge assumptions so you're a great challenger i'm hearing <laughs> um what else are you doing differently you to compare to other innovations in the fields i think that um so as we've discussed, you know, taking things down really to the simplest block and then seeing what is what is working. And I think the other thing is that we have all of our resources are openly licensed. Mm-hmm. So we want other organizations and people to use our what we create. It's complete. All, everything is completely free and we want them to make it their own. And we're using um, like a really multimedia approach to everything. So our toolkits, which are 50 page documents have been made into GIFs uh, are also in the, you know, available. Um, the, the the main things are also available as social media graphics, as comic strips, as podcasts in different languages. So we we just pretty much just think whatever gets people. It's great whatever, outreach. Whatever, mm-hmm. exactly, whatever we want, um, whatever we can use to um, reach the women we want, we'll do it. We have deceptive covers so there's some really stereotypical um um covers that women can print out and then use for to hide a resource uh-huh. or make um, online sites uh, for Chanitalia, pakistan and india we have um uh, a hide this page button which takes you to an like, like a very random page on the web yeah. so if somebody walks over you can click on it and uh, all of our resources are continuously developing so yeah. we don't have a finished product so we make changes to our things all the time so so i think a few weeks ago a survivor sent a message saying i don't like like that line oh, in, okay. <laughs> on that resource and because of this okay so we okay. changed it and so... the whole process five minutes i guess i guess the uh you, you stole the question i had just now or maybe have you got other example of unexpected suggestions or or comment by a service user that that made you amend your program and about outside these um cosmetic or, or or linguistic or or you know content things that any other example that users really really contributed to uh to your programs so one thing that uh, we had never thought of before was somebody said uh, it would be really good if you could make uh, audiobooks mm-hmm. because it's uh, more inconspicuous and you can we can list, somebody you can listen to it and it also breaches the barrier between so basically uh, this lady was going through abuse a very abusive marriage herself but she also wanted to help her um, someone uh, who was an employee mm-hmm. also going through it but was very wasn't very literate mm-hmm. so she said can you somehow make this into an audio so that i can just give it to her and i can and then you know i don't have i know that she's she has some sort of support mm-hmm. this was something we had not even thought about at all mm-hmm. the other uh, really good example was when we were um for one of our resources that we're working on at the moment which is around um how to stay safer online and how do you protect yourself against stalking? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the suggestions was that it's uh, this, it's it's so complicated all of the security measures that you have to take to be safe, and there's a lot of um, again assumptions around what somebody knows and what somebody doesn't. Mm-hmm. So why don't you make videos 
and then that's something we had not thought about so we said okay fine we'll mm-hmm. make videos mm-hmm. survivor said what about children and as a charity that's primarily focused on women um we um thought that okay we were going to add more support support for children another example is uh, queer rights so as a charity that was com- that was mostly looking at um hetero relationships not um not for the lack of trying but just had focused on it before and uh, then we got so many of our users and volunteers suggesting that that's really important mm-hmm. so this year we are launching a platform just completely based on that There was a girl who was had been trying to um, leave her house of, um, and sort of leave her parent parental home, which mm-hmm. was very very abusive uh, for seven years, and she had contacted lots of charities and she hadn't re- heard back from anyone or people had just told her that they couldn't help her, and then um, she started talking to one of our volunteers and she started using our resources and she was actually she actually inspired. She actually helped us edit a lot of our of our uh, content, but also ended up leaving the house because of the confidence that she got from wow. having one person who would just spoke to them and for her to feel like she had worth mm-hmm. because she actually helped shape what we were doing. And that for me, that was great because she was um, in a very um, oppressive country in the Middle East and it was very difficult for her to go, but she managed it and all by herself. She just needed the encouragement. There was someone who was in, who was with a very influential person in her community and had not recognized the signs of abuse at all until she came to an event that Jen was running. Mm -hmm. And just during the event realized that actually the relationship that she was in was extremely controlling Mm -hmm. because it was emotional abuse. It's very difficult to spot it. Mm -hmm. And by the time she left the event, she grabbed a copy of one of our resources, went home, read it, and five days later filed for divorce. There was a lady who messaged us for Chen Pakistan saying that she, uh, for five years, she had thought that she was responsible for all the bad that was happening to her. Um, and then she, for the first time after she read the website and she read these sections on, a, on um, domestic abuse, but also depression and anxiety, mm-hmm. that she realized that it wasn't her fault. And just knowing that, was good enough for her to make peace with her life, even though she knew that she couldn't leave her situation. There was no help for her. Just knowing that she's not at fault made mm-hmm. her happier. Mm-hmm. So I think I think it's really important to give the examples of like, of situations where women don't have the option of leaving. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. Feel empowered and they try to make the most of what fate has yes. given them. Exactly. Another question that a lot of people ask me, which I wish they didn't, but it is around, is tech more unsafe? What I would love for them to ask me is how can we make tech more safe? Or yeah. how um, how are women using technology at the moment? I think that there is so much assumption around this. Yeah. I'm actually, it's one of the reasons I'm really proud that Chen is doing a research project with Comic Relief, which is yeah. a big funder yeah. around how women in the UK use technology. And these are women who have survived abuse or are going through abuse right now. Yeah. So I think that question is how are women using it right now? I think it's so important because people often talk about, oh, what is the latest innovation? What are the charities doing? What are, how what are, how is the government using tech? But what people don't ask is how are survivors using tech? What are they doing with what they have? Exactly. And how can we tap into that? Exactly, exactly. Because they can play as well if they have then success stories, then they can serve as mentors to others and be the first first line uh, uh, supporters. Okay. Um, who would you love to have at the table to to make you know to make these issues change faster? Who would you like? Who would you like to work with? What would be a great yeah. breakthrough? I think for generally, who would. And I think I've made this point many times is that I think more survivors need to be at the center of the conversation, mm-hmm. not invited as speakers at events mm-hmm. to give us an example or something to raise empathy, but actually as people people who have really valid contributions to make mm-hmm. to the sector. So I think I really ho- wish that there were more survivors involved in technology and also in change sort of the, the whole women's rights sector. Mm-hmm. And 
uh, people that I'd like to work with, I would love to work more closely with people who are on the frontline services. So if it's lawyers, um, whether it's um, counselors who have to, you know, counsel women, they're, they're sporting patrons, doctors who mm-hmm. spot patrons, and then, you know, they their duty of care ends at one point and they don't know what else they can do. So how you, with the teachers, teachers yeah. are a great position to help and empower um, young people who are going through abuse. Yeah. And other, I think people, I'm, I'm not going to say government because it's like a big <laughs> chunk. Thank I think you. something around justice, like people who are in the justice departments are yeah. really important because our judiciary is still quite archaic in how it views cases to do with abuse. And um, in most countries, people, people still have clued on to online uh, abuse and mm-hmm. it's still it's still you know in a country like the UK where you have m- such a high concentration of uh, online users mm-hmm. you legislation is still far behind mm-hmm. so I think having more um, awareness in police and judiciary around the online um, aspect of abuse would be really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tell me now, Hera, if uh, people who are listening to this uh, uh, audio or l- looking at the video want to be involved with Chain wherever they are in the world, what's the you know one, two, three steps to follow? Well, it's really simple. If you feel like you have uh, the time and the commitment to do something uh, for Chen and help us with our work, then you just go to chayn.co backslash join and uh, fill out a very quick form and then talk to somebody from Chen. We have a super simple uh, um, volunteer induction process because we don't want to make it painful for anybody. <laughs> and I've been, I've been through the painful process myself and you have to wait for months to hear back if you can volunteer. Yeah. So like that. Okay. Um, uh, we just want to make sure people are a good fit, and yeah. that's it. You do not need to be an expert in technology at all. We work with things that you already know how to. So use. contributions can be small as long as yeah. they are committed. Exactly. Well, okay. yeah. Chen is about commitment and also engagement. So it doesn't matter. It, you don't have to work for six months. Okay. Um, it's about even if you can uh, commit a few hours every week. That's very good. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Hera Hussain from Chain. Mm-hmm.